All right, and picking up right where we started, or uh, ended. Grace leaving for the night, and the dreams return. Day three. Drawn to Bacchus' abode, I sought there to conspire, but it was in the city of the dead that I found my heart's desire. Bacchus, the Roman god of wine, equivalent of the Greek Dionysus. That's not his name. I'm so glad you could join us today. I've got messages when you want them. Mm. I also checked out Kazanoo. There are multiple listings in the white pages. I got the page, but you'll have to figure out the right one. Right, thanks. Now, are you gonna tell me what happened yesterday with Malgagetti, or <laughs> is it just too embarrassing? Don't tell me you actually got to see her. Are the stars out tonight? Gabriel, you don't seriously think she's interested. She can have any man in the city. You know, men with bank accounts. You underestimate the Knight family's tragic poet samurai appeal. When Daddy married Mom, she was the hottest catch in town. Hmm. Huh. I always suspected there was something fishy in your family tree. But seriously, I think you should be careful. Oh, Grace. I'm serious. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach about this. It's called jealousy, my dear. And you're right. You should be jealous of Malia Getty. As should every woman on this planet. I just... I, oh, never mind. I'll just fix these books. Your life is in your own slippery little hands. The point is to get it into somebody else's hands. And soon. Oh, Gabriel. Times pick of you. Dated June 20, 1993. Gabriel scans over an uninteresting front page. Under the cultural events section, there's a notice about a lecture on African religions. The lecture is at Tulane University, Gabriel's horoscope for the day. An evil eye is upon you. Change course before it's too late. Batten up. Might not be bad advice for Gabriel. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? This Grace told us she has some messages for us. Do you have messages for me? Your pal mostly called. He left a message that they're interrogating a suspect this morning, and you might want to be there. Sounds fun. Mm-hmm. I bet. Do you have more messages for me? That man from Germany called again, Wolfgang Ritter. Now he's claiming to be a relative of yours. I took down his number. If you change your mind and want to give him a call back, just ask me for it. Can I get that phone number for Wolfgang Ritter? Sure. I'll give it to you when we're done talking. All right. Here's that phone number. Thanks. Now, if you remember, there was a phone back here. So, we now have... Oh, yes. So, we have some numbers for Casano. 
that we can try out. And we have this number for Wolfgang Ritter. So let's make a phone call. And I'd run down over here. You can, yeah, you can pull it up here, but. And the phone's not on. Guten Tag, Sie haben Schloss Ritter erreicht. I'm looking for Wolfgang Ritter. Ja, einen Moment. Ja, ist es Gabriel on the phone? This is Gabriel Knight. Why are you calling me, Mr. Ritter? I have been having premonitions of great danger for you, Gabriel. You must leave New Orleans this very day. What the hell are you talking about? It is hard to explain on the phone. I have had senses, uh, feelings about you. It took me a long time to have you tracked down. I had a sense that Heinz had a grandson, but until these dreams started, I, I did not know if I should contact you. You say you're related to my grandfather? Yes. Heinz was my brother. There is much about the family that you should know, Gabriel. Come to Schloss Ritter in Rittersberg, West Germany. It is our family home. I will tell you everything when you come. You must come immediately. You are in great danger there. Look, I appreciate the family spirit and all, but frankly I don't know you from Adam, and I'm not going to fly off to Germany even if I could afford it. Gabriel, please, if you won't listen, at least let me send you something. It is a journal from one of your ancestors. Promise me you will read it. Well, I'm pretty busy. Please, Gabriel, you are the last of our line. I am too old to carry on. You are our last hope. Please, for your family, read the journal. All right, I'll look at it. Good. Now be careful and come to me as soon as you can. Goodbye. All right, now we can use the phone again. And instead of calling all of these numbers, I'll just call the one that is the correct Casano, which is 1280. Hello? Hello? I'm calling from the Dixieland Drugstore. We have an order for you. Castro, be quiet! Who is this? I'm a friend of the owner. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that didn't work. Um, what else can we try? You got the right number, right? Yeah. But what's this? Cajun Critters Vet Clinic. Hmm. Maybe we can learn something from them. 6170. Cajun Critters Animal Clinic, this is Melissa. <laughs> you know anything about animal sacrifice? Do you have a Madame Kazonu as a client? Madame Kazonu? Sure, I know her. She's not here right now, though. Really? Hmm. She told me she'd be there. Uh, would you happen to have an address by any chance? Uh, yes. But I'm not sure I should give it out. Who are you again? <laughs> She's my aunt. She's won a major prize. I'm worried about Castro. He's missed three dance lessons. I'm worried about Castro. He's missed three dance lessons. Castro? Her little doggy? Oh, he's so sweet. Well, I guess if you know Castro, it's okay. Uh, her address is 345 Dauphine. Thanks. Of course, no one could ever know someone's dog's name without being the kind of person that you should give their address to. Makes perfect sense. I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Good luck. First thing I want to do is check in with um, Grandma Knight 
and see if she knows anything about this Wolfgang Ritter. Oh, should have gone to Jackson Square first to pick up the drawing. We'll head there after this. My precious boy, how wonderful of you to stop by. Can't stay away from you, Gran. Make yourself at home, son. Just get a quick history on. We talk, Grand. Of course, my boy. How Some... can I help? Do you know anyone named Wolfgang Redder? As I said, your granddad's surname was originally Redder. I never learned much about his family, but from things he said, I always thought he had a brother back in Germany. I don't know if Wolfgang Ritter is related to your granddad or not. I think that's it. Do you know anyone named Wolfgang Ritter? I don't know what else to tell you. Alright. That's enough. Well, Gran, I'd better get going. Alright, dear. We have a... Very important lecture to get to at Tulane, but first I want to get our picture. I'm going to take the long way around because I also want to see this young lady. Hmm, what do you need to ask her about? How about a reading? The prices are listed on the side. They seem a little steep. Well, I sometimes do my intimate friends for nothing. But I am a businesswoman. I'm sure you are. Oh, Gabriel. Oops. I'm supposed to ask her to dance, but somehow that just happened by itself. Seems to have forgotten her shawl. Thanks, boys. Alright, let's grab this quick. And before we hand it back, this is easy to miss. Let's take a look Gabriel at it. Examines the veil with a magnifying glass. That sequin looks a little strange. Why, it's a snake scale. Maybe if I... This is the last... Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to remove the snake scale from the veil. That looks different than... the scale that we got at the crime scene. Let's take a closer Gabriel look. Gabriel magnifies the scale from the fortune teller. The iridescent scale is hued olive green. It doesn't seem to match the scale from Lake Pontchartrain. All right, so now let's return the veil. I think this veil belongs to you. Huh, my veil. I'm always losing those things. You have no idea. Well, darling, 
You're such a sweetie to return a lady to delicate and so handsome as well. Will I? And since you have such a clear interest in fortune telling, let me see your hands. They look so strong. Perhaps they will make both our fortunes clear, no? I wish something would. Hmm, strong. Yes, and yet so delicate and uh, flexible. <sighs> you don't know the half of it. Oh, good. I see a mysterious woman in your immediate future. Madame Lorelei winks at Gabriel knowingly. She is a dangerous one. Dark and beautiful. Ah, I see the road of your life, Falcon. And very soon... <laughs> the blood drains from Madame Lorelei's face in an instant. Sweat beads on her upper lip. Are you okay? No. Oh. oh God! Beware! Beware! What is it about me lately? Well, prior to that, she was laying it on awful thick. Forgot that I meant to turn the subtitles on. Yes, better late How's than it never. Going today? What? Oh, it's only you. Man, I have been jumpy all day. That that pattern of yours really freaked me out for some reason. It's just something creepy. You finished it? Yeah, and you're welcome to it. Here. Wow, this is great. Uh-huh. Just don't, like, blow up the planet with it or something, okay? I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, forget it. I'm probably just being stupid. Do your thing with it, and good luck. All right. So, kind of jumping ahead slightly, but if we had gone to try and see Madame Casanou, she would not let us in, because um, she is a good, God-fearing woman, and does not believe in this voodoo nonsense. Nothing on that shelf interests Gabriel. Nothing on that... Nothing on... Well, you never know when a priest's collar will come in handy. So just to save time, we'll grab this now, before we go. I can't resist black. Let's see. I actually think we want to just come back around. I think Madame Casanou is supposed to come back. Could be wrong, though. Or not Madame Casanou. Whatever the fortune teller's name was. Alright. So, alright, let's go to our, uh, our lecture. Which we actually are going to legitimately sit through. And it does take a little while, but... It's mildly interesting if it's actually true. It looks like the lecture is just starting. Gabriel decides to record the session. Voodoo is the tribal religion of Africa. But the name Voodoo is actually a banner heading under which resides an entire body of distinct tribal belief systems. The word Voodoo may sound familiar to you. What is known in the States as Voodoo is actually an amalgamation of African religious systems, voodoo, and European religions, primarily Catholicism. All of the subcults of African voodoo have certain things in common. The most important is the worship of a pantheon of spirits instead of the single deity that the Christian and Muslim systems have. Some of these spirits are elementals. Some relate to specific tasks or places. Some represent important tribal leaders who have died. This spirit worship is what makes voodoo so easily adaptable. With all those spirits, it's no problem to add a few more. Say, for example, the Virgin Mary. At the height of tribal Africa, warfare was common. One tribe would conquer another, and the Loa, important in the conqueror's tribal system, would be adopted readily into the conquered tribe's Loa pantheon. 
In this way, many of the voodoo cults spread and mingled throughout tribal Africa, enriching the belief system and causing innumerable offshoots. The basis for the voodoo religion seems to be as old as man himself. It has much in common with many early pagan practices, animal totems, sympathetic magic, elemental spirits in the trees, the heavens, the bodies of the sea. Africa is believed by many to be the cradle of the human race. Some of the voodoo moa may be as old as the Garden of Eden itself. We still can't explain some of the real power of these primal religions. And note, I said primal, not primitive. There are African bokors who baffle our scientists with their supernatural powers. Now, let's discuss the elements of voodoo. Fascinating guy. In voodoo, the spirits are called the loa. During a voodoo ceremony, celebrants are possessed by the loa. This is called being ridden. The human worshiper is seen as a horse, and the loa as the divine horseman. A person being ridden by a loa takes on the characteristics of that spirit and becomes, in effect, merely a vessel for the more powerful entity. Some of the older, original Africa loa include Damala, the great serpent god, is ruling the mistress of love. Papa Nabal, or Gede, the lord of death. Agwe, the spirit of water. Legba, spirit of the crossroads. And the cruelest and most dangerous, Ogun Badagri, the lord of destruction. Oh, I gotta get more sleep at night. A uh, tribe-specific loa can have as much or more power as the more widely worshipped loa. For instance, a particular tribe might revere highly the loa of an ancestor who was a legendary hunter or politician. Voodoo temples are called haunfors. Their priests, hangun or bokors. Their priestesses, mama loa. In a voodoo haunfor, there's a ritual circle marked by a center pole called a poto mitan. The ritual circle is prepared with a bebe, a pattern of symbols. Each tribe's bebe is slightly different, consisting of complex symbols that identify their special law. During ritual conclaves, initiates dance under the supervision of a boat and a mama loa, or head priestess. The use of totems or animal masks and markings was not uncommon in the original African ceremonies. Now, though, all but the oldest sects have abandoned this practice. Ritual objects used during the conclaves include the ritual gourd or asson, the ritual knife or kubasa, that knife gives me the chills. Looks similar to a dream we had. The ritual whip, or fwet kash. Hmm. And the ritual coffin, or seke madule. These items are often optional, called for by the mamaloa for specific magic rituals. The mamaloa is the most powerful figure in any voodoo moon sect. Voodoon is a truly matriarchal system. Even the Bokor knows his power is limited. Mama Loa is the supreme woman. She oops, butterflies. Oh, butterflies. There's actually a lot of that that ends up Fire line. coming up later. Gabriel? Mmm, what? I can't see. Gabriel! Get in! Yeah, it's too small for me. You must get in, Gabriel. It's not mine. Too small. Hide, Gabriel. Hide! 
no, no, let me out, help. Young man, the lecture is over. Oh my God. Whoops. Well, this guy's so knowledgeable about all this stuff. Maybe he can provide us with some information on this. The artist's reconstruction of the voodoo murders pattern looks accurate to Gabriel. Something about it seems vaguely familiar. Let's pop back here, see what he has to say. Hopefully he's not too mad at us for falling asleep. No. My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Well, you have walked into my private office, Mr. Knight. I hope you have something worthwhile to do here. This guy's got some cool stuff. Let's chat. Maybe we'll talk to him first. Eh, forget it. Let's just give it to him. Can you tell me anything about this pattern? Wow. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Mind if I copy this? Be my guest. Great. I'll be right back. Here you go. You know, this is a fascinating baby. You must tell me all about its origin. Actually, I was hoping you'd tell me. Can you figure out anything about it from the symbols? Well, some. That's why I wanted a copy. I want to research the design myself. Each of the symbols in the baby represents something. Loa, a place. Where did you get this? Have you heard of the voodoo murders? No, you're kidding. Really? Then the voodoo is authentic. The newspapers are wrong. Boy, are they wrong. You think this veve is authentic, then? Authentic? It's tonight, that's like asking if the Mona Lisa is a painting. Tell you what, I'll uh, look into these symbols myself and see what I can learn about the sect that made this. I'll give you a call when I have more information. Uh, you are associated with the police, aren't you? Absolutely. But I'm, um, undercover. You can contact me at the St. George's Bookshop in the quarter. All right. Now, I'd like to get started on this if you don't mind. Oh, so interested in these murders, maybe he'll be interested in seeing. Is there anything you can tell me about the this. voodoo aspects of this photograph? Mm, this is serious voodoo ritual. Nasty stuff. In what way? Let's see. I can't make out much detail from this photograph, except for the corpse, of course. But the wound, the face. And what little I can see of the ritual paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of certain black voodoo practices. Very rare. I've never witnessed them myself, if you understand. Really? Interesting. Thanks. Alrighty. Now, we can ask him uh, a... pick your brain? Not if it will get you out of my office. I'm asking him a number of things, but um, most of this we can find out from other people, or he'll tell us, you know, you should watch my. I've actually listened to lecture, but this is something where no one else seems to be able to answer us. Do you have any idea what Capri Saint Gal means? Capri Saint Court. Yes, I do. It's a Haitian term, I believe. It's French, and literally translates as "goat without horns," as in. A female goat? No, as in a human sacrifice. Sacrifices in voodoo are usually the animal variety. Chickens, wolves, goats. If the gods demand a goat without horns, it means a human being. Interesting. Uh, I think that's it. What was that translation for Capri saint Cor again? I'm not in the habit of... Alright. Um... So you can talk to him and get some more interesting info on uh, voodoo, but that's it, for actually. Up for a few Let me check this out. Tell me more about human sacrifice. 
It's uh, very rare. Most Fudun practices do not include human sacrifice as a matter of record, but it is theoretically possible if that the gods demand. For example, one of the chants I had translated for me from a Haitian ritual went like this. Mistress Azuli, come and aid us. If a cock is demanded, we will give it. If a bull will suffice, behold it. But if a goat without horns is required for a sacrifice, or oh where will we find one? Azuli is the gentlest of Loa, so they call on her for mercy. But I have seen grown and powerful Hungan tremble before a possession by one of the more violent Loa, such as Akani. Clearly, they are afraid that something of the sort will be ordered, or that the Loa will simply take it for themselves. Nice, that's enough. Alrighty, let's head out. Okay, thanks. Oh, do keep in touch. Gabriel has a remarkable way with women and a remarkable ability to piss off everyone else. Uh, let's pop into the police station. We do have something that we should probably return to Mosley. for letting me borrow it. Yeah? You borrowed again in your history. About that. Glad you made it. It'll give you a feel for how I am in action. You know, handling suspects, that sort of thing. I'm sure it'll be invigorating. Uh, who is this guy, anyway? He calls himself Crash. He's been an informant for us before, but mostly helping us bust small-time pimps dealers trying to break into the territory. Well, he's been staying invisible during these murders, but we picked him up this morning to Jackson Square. Pushing coke? He knows something. Call it Detective's Instinct. Detective's Instinct. Got it. Alright, Crash. I want to hear about these murders. You've been present at the so-called voodoo ritual? I don't know nothing. I told you. Come on now, you can tell me. Do you know anyone who's been to these rituals? Look, I, I can't say nothing. You gotta let me go, man. Hey, you relax. No one knows you're here. The men who picked you up were plain clothes men. Plain clothes, like you could fool them. <laughs> they know I'm here. They've got ears all over the city. They know everything. Now, who are they, Crash? Are they the ones doing the murder? Let me go! If you're so worried about being detained, start talking. Now, you tell me what I want to hear, and maybe I can get you in the witness protection program. But you have to earn it. Witness protection? Are you crazy? Don't make me laugh. Jesus, just let me out of here! Now, come on. Who's behind these murders, Crash? Why are the victims all members of the other? By now they know I'm here. It's, it's different when I'm supposed to come here. Well, if I can send a message, tell them I didn't say nothing. Christ, he's freaking useless. Take him back to detain him, would you, Tony? I tell you, times like this, I'd kill for true sermon. Damn the civil rights. Can I quote you on that? Huh? Hell no. Damn! We only keep him for 24 hours. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna have to let him go. Sorry it wasn't more exciting. And for the book, I think. Maybe you can punch it up some. You know, what do they call that? Fix it. That's it. It's a it's tough word is. to remember. I'll see what I can do. All right, that's all we really need. I'll let you get back to it. Later, Knight. So now we know that tomorrow morning, Crash is going to be released. Uh, let's go to the store first. There's something we need to set in motion by coming here. 
Gabriel can Whatever. So we know he won't tell us about that, but I'm gonna ask you him about animal masks. animal masks. Like the ones in the voodoo rituals they do for the tourists? Right. I used to sell a few as souvenirs. The only one left is Willie Jr. over there. The old crocodile. Well he's sort of a mascot now, yeah. About Willie Jr., would you be willing to let him go? Hmm, maybe. For a hundred dollars. A hundred bucks? You've got to be kidding. Me and Willie Jr. are very close, no. We'll part with him for less. Alright. So, somehow we need to come up with a hundred bucks in order to get that... Crocodile mask. Let's go back to the store for a minute. I knew you'd miss me, so I came back. Really? I forgot you were gone. And I don't think we just handed it. I think we actually have to ask her, but just to test it. Gabriel doesn't see a Okay, let's have a conversation. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? I have a pattern I need you to research. How interesting. What is it? It's a reconstruction of the tracings they found around the murder victims. The ones done in flour and blood. Ugh. You shouldn't carry this kind of thing around. Who knows what these symbols mean? Well, wear your evil vanishing gloves if you want. But check it out for me, would you? I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. Alright. So... Let's see if we can kill... A couple seconds... We'll go talk to Miss Casano. Oh, never mind. Hey, kids. Bruno, how nice. Gee, a customer. Of yours, hardly. How's the flower business? Well, better than the used book business, I see. Rare books. That explains why I so rarely see anyone in here. Are you going to sell me that wonderful painting of yours today? How much would you give me for it, Bruno? Gabriel, don't you dare sell your father's painting. Stay out of this, Grace. Oh, you're serious? You'll let me have it? Yeah, I'll let you have it, all right. How much for the painting? Hmm, well, I could give you a hundred. That's all I can let go at the moment, you know. My fares are so tied up. Gabriel, a hundred dollars for your father's painting? Grace, let me deal with this. I don't know what happens if we say no. If he comes back, we get to try again, but... Fine. We do sure. need the cash. Gabriel! Here, here's the hundred. You better take good care of this, Bruno. This is not just another of your hip art pieces, you know. Really? Well, I fully intend to make the most of its display, though not for your sake, I'm sure. At least in my shop, there'll be a chance of someone actually seeing it. I can't believe I actually got it. Just wait until I show Sid. I don't believe you! It, it's just a painting, Grace. There are things I have to do. Alright, so... See you later. Uh-huh. 
Grace is not pleased with us. Let's pop back and grab Willie quickly. Hi. Uh -huh. Crisp hundred dollar bill. I have a hundred dollars. You still want to sell that crocodile mask? That's a hundred dollars, sure enough. The mask. It's yours, sir. Yeah, you go. Careful that don't bite you now. Yeah, thanks. Don't you go forgetting your lagniac. A free bottle of master gambling oil. The sign said I could get Lady Luck oil instead. Well, I wasn't thinking a man as young as you would be needing that kind of remedy. But if you had a problem with your... Oh, that's all right. Believe me, I don't need it. I'll just stick with this. Thanks, anyway. <laughs> of course, it ain't none of my business if you do need it. I don't need it. Of course you don't. Apparently Gabriel does not like to have his manhood questioned. Um, so, we have three more things to do. Casino we have to go to before the third one, but let's go to the cemetery first. So we came here once, but we never did look at the uh, voodoo code message. Gabriel's family crypt, like we told Graham we would. The right family, too. Several of Gabriel and Grand's family members are laid to rest here. I have no idea why it's right instead of night. The marker reads, Mera Planta Right. These are Grand's folks. I know oh, them. that's why. The marker reads, Franklin Wright. These are Grand's folks. I never knew them. The marker reads, Grand sister, she died young. The marker reads, Harrison Knight. Granddaddy. The marker reads, Philip Knight. Daddy. The marker reads, Margaret Templeton Knight. My mother. I don't know why I thought he said something somewhat more meaningful. Gabriel does. Hmm. Maybe. Hey, Daddy. Hey, miss you, Mom. How's it going, Granddaddy? Yeah, I think that's about it. Ooh, ooh, Getty. Malia. Mr. Knight, what are you doing here? Uh, my family's tomb is here. Mine too. I noticed. Supple. <laughs> well, Mr. Knight, if there's nothing else. Don't go. I need to talk to you. Whatever for. I can't stop thinking about you. I've been in your thoughts too. I can see it in your eyes. Mr. Knight, you don't know anything about me. I'm not in a position to get involved. I've said that a million times myself, but this is different. I think we both know we can't fight it. Oh, I can't believe I'm saying this. I have so many obligations. My family is very traditional. You wouldn't understand. Hey, I love tradition. I've seen Fiddler on the Roof a hundred times. This isn't a musical, Mr. Knight. We live in different worlds. Look. I know you've got more money than God. Do you think I care? Do you think that's why I'm saying this? No, I don't. Why don't you come see my world? I have a little bookshop, St. George's, on Bourbon. I know. See? I knew it. You're crazy about me, too. Come back tonight. Please. My world isn't so bad. I'm sorry. 
but there's no place for someone like you in my life. Not now, not ever. Damn. You did your best, Gabriel. Smooth, but just not quite smooth enough. Um, alright, let's check out Miss Casano. We got a number of things to talk to her about, but first, we need to put on our disguise. Gabriel will love. That's a nice reminder that technically Gabriel is still doing this just because he's trying to research for his book. Alright, but this is private. That doesn't... Yes? Who is it? It's Father McLaughlin to see you. Father McLaughlin, you say? You must be new in the parish. I'm so pleased to meet you, Father. Do come in. Thank you, my child. So this is now... Please be... Now, what can I do for you? This is Tim Curry, pretending to be Cajun, pretending to be Irish. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions, my child? Of course not, Mon Père. Now, one of the biggest reasons we need to know what Cabri saint Corps means is because Madame Casano won't talk to us about certain things until we can prove that we know its Do meaning. Do you have any idea what Cabri saint Corps means? <laughs> Mary, I know. I bet you do not, Father Nespa. I don't speak French. Tony the Chili. It means goat without horn. Father, you surprise me. You do know what it means. You know what they mean by good without hearts, don't you? A human being? That's right. Slit your throat. Cut out your heart. Pure evil murder. Hmm. Why not you tell us some more, Miss you know Casano? human sacrifice here in New Orleans? Real voodoo queens. Tell me more. Who were the real voodoo queens? Uh, well, my great grandmother told me that Lavaux was just a front, a flamboyant decoy. She distracted authorities from the real voodoo queen of Norians. It's been the same one for almost 200 years. She's head of a secret voodoo on fall. That's what they call the temples, you know. It's so secret. Most of the voodoo people in this city don't even know about it. The real voodoo queen controlled Lavo, gave her a little bit of power, and used her like a puppet. Tell me more about this secret voodoo hound fool. Well, I've never seen it. I wouldn't go near it if you paid me. But it's here in Orleans, I guarantee it. I hear the drums at night, oh yes. That's why I am so ill. I tell you, those drums. But we should talk about it. They'll hear us. It's the devil's work that happens there, I can tell you. I'll show you something. Something secret. You mustn't tell anyone, father. I swear on my collar. Here it is, mon père. A true object of evil if there ever was one. It radiates something, all right. It belonged to my great-grandmother. She told my mother that it was a token to gain entrance to the real voodoo ceremonies. You don't say. To tell you the truth, I always felt nervous about having it in the house. You know. Evil influence and all. Oh, I can see how you would, yes. And yet, I could never part with it. 
It's been in the family for generations. Would you bless it for me, Father? I feel strange asking such a thing of you, but surely you understand. Bless this bracelet of a snake, even though its vibes aren't great. Let it do nobody harm when they wear it on their arm. Voodoo spirits, go away. Don't come back another day. And now, let us pray. So, this seems like a very useful item, but Miss Casino won't let us keep it. However, maybe... Gabriel has a thought about the clay. Bless, oh bless, this circlet of silver. Take the curse, oh take it, Wilbur. A lovely blessing, Mopé. Yes, I think it made a lasting impression. Here you go. I feel so much better now. Uh, and that's about it. So now we have a mold of the bracelet that provides people entrance to voodoo rituals. We also have a mask that people could wear at voodoo rituals, so we're doing pretty well for ourselves. Well, madame, I must be gone. Of course, father. All right, so Gabriel changed back. back. Street looking like this. And we got one more place to go. Let's have a chat with. I think the bartender name. Oh. I think the bartender's name is Sam. Could I ask you a few questions? I don't remember them. I'm not too busy at the moment. Oh, shoot. Let's ask about voodoo first. What can you first. tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? <laughs> I don't believe in it myself. I invented a drink once called La Vose too. But it wasn't very popular. Some people do believe, though. Even some of our regulars here at Napoleon House. What can you tell me about voodoo? I'm no expert. You might want to talk to someone who believes in it. Let's go out the bar patrons then. See if we can find out who believes in it. What can you tell me about your regulars in here? This crowd? The ones you see are mostly regulars. That guy and girl in the corner come here a lot. But they're not fighting. They're all over each other. In other words, they're in love. What can you tell me about your regulars in here? See those old guys at the chess table? That's Sam and Marcus. Ah, uh, the guys knew Sam. They played every day for 20 years. Sam, the one with the purple jacket, he's lost every one of those games. It's not that he's a bad player. I've seen him beat guys twice as good as Marcus. But Marcus has Sam so psyched out, he loses his nerve every time. By the way, Sam, the chess player, he's into that voodoo stuff. He's always talking about spells and gree gree and stuff. Really? Thanks. So what has Sam told you about voodoo? Well, about 50 years ago, Sam was too shy to talk to this pretty girl he was in love with. He went to a voodooine and had her make him a love charm. It was a little pot that he had to bury under the girl's front porch. He buried the pouch, and the next day, he went up and talked to the girl. And, sure enough, she didn't reject him. Now nah, she's his wife. <laughs> Poor guy. So, uh, this bar is actually Gabriel's bar, where he comes. And if we ask more questions, then you know the bartender kind of reveals that. Like, oh, you're in here all the time. Um... But I think that's all we have to ask him about, because now we can talk to Sam. Nothing like a good game of chess, huh? Yeah, well, this isn't a good game. This is torture. Oh, well. Have fun. And we know that Sam's a big believer in voodoo, and that he always loses. 
But we... The small bottle is labeled Master Gambling Oil. Have this voodoo gambling oil. Got a second, Sam? It's about your game. I don't have a game. That's my problem. Don't you touch those chess pieces while I'm gone, you bastard. <gasps> Samuel. Language. Thought you might be interested in this gambling oil. Let me see that. Master gambling oil. What's it for? This is a powerful voodoo oil. Ah, go on. Really? Don't you ever wonder why Marcus wins every time? Marcus? Using voodoo? That old best. Pitiful, isn't it? Let me see that bottle. Oh, this looks authentic. Oh, it is. If I could really beat that bastard. Stonewall, give me a pin's cup, would you? Come it up, Sam. How much you think I'd have put in here? Careful. You don't want to overdo it. Too much luck can be dangerous. Ah! There's no such thing as too much. Now stand back. Come on already. I'm ready to chat me. We'll see about that Mr. Smarty Big Mouth. <laughs> Sounds like Zoidberg. Checkmate! <laughs> Checkmate, you bastard! Son of a bitch! Twenty years I've been waiting to say that! Checkmate, checkmate, checkmate! <laughs> you are the biggest butthead Sam Singleton that I ever met! Checkmate! You, you, Aaron, just put this chip board where the sun don't shine. <laughs> Hallelujah, I did it. Yippee. Nice game. Nice game. Hell, I was brilliant. Oh, so I got to give some of the credit to that oil of yours. I've been losing to that guy for 20 years. If you ever need a favor, you come to send me here. Will do. Now, if we talk to Sam a little more, or maybe the bartender and Sam will actually learn that he is a jeweler when he's not here playing chess. Could you do anything with this? What is this? A clay mold? Hmm. Well, I am a jeweler, you know. And I owe you one. Would you like me to cast this for you? Hmm. If you can. You got it, pal. Actually, it'll be a pleasure to get my tools out first time in years. I've been too busy playing that goddamn game. I'll have the bracelet tomorrow. Meet me here. Great, thanks. Alright, and that, I think. It's getting late. It's getting late. Gabriel decides to go home for the day. Excuse me, I'm going inside. Oh, uh, excuse me, I'm afraid St. George's is closed for the day. I'm not a customer. I'm here to see the owner. Why don't you just leave your name and number with me, and I'll tell him you stopped by. Listen, if Gabriel is here, he'll want to see me. Is he here? Really couldn't say for certain, but in the morning... Gracie, say goodnight. Ugh. You came. I didn't think you would. I didn't think I would either. Oh, uh, I could show you around a little. Yeah, it's not much, but... Please, don't. I couldn't focus on much of anything right now. Yeah, I know. God, what is it about you? 
Just shut up and kiss me. Woo woo, KPO! Alright, so we will end things there and come back on day four. See ya.